than you. Who is the person that you will be able to minister to and bring that breakthrough because of the word of your testimony? You see, I was able to minister to her because I was at the same place that she was, complaining, feeling sorry for myself, and not seeing in the spiritual eyes what God is brewing, what God is preparing, what God is about to do. I was in the same place. Worst of all, I had the Holy Spirit in my life. I was worse than her because I knew Christ and I had the Holy Spirit in my life. But thank God for God's mercy that set me free and with my testimony because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and that we do not love our lives even unto death. So number one, the blood of the lamb. You have to know what the blood means for you. What's that the blood have to do for you? How much confidence do you have in the blood of the lamb? How much, I'm saying it again, because when I say things, and I know this is from the Lord, I tend to repeat it. How much confidence do we have in the blood of the Lamb? And how effective that blood is for me personally? Because we see, yeah, the blood of Jesus is powerful. But is it powerful for you? Are you confident in that blood? Can you stand up? Can you stand up and declare that the blood of Jesus covers you? Can you stand up in the midst of difficulties and you cannot touch him and covered by the blood of Jesus? Can you in the midst of doubt and not unbelief, can you stand up and say, by the blood of Jesus I can enter into the holiest place? How much confidence and, and power, uh, faith you have in the blood of Jesus for you? Because that is the key. Your testimony is nothing if you don't have confidence in the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus becomes effective when you become to share your testimony. See, they both have to go together. It ha they are both related. We have a testimony because of the blood of Jesus. And because of the blood of Jesus, I'm bound to have testimony. And when I stand in those two things, then of course my life, even unto death, there's nothing to worry about because when I have encountered the blood of Jesus and the power that the blood of Jesus has, my life is hidden under that. So of course I'm not afraid of death or somebody who can come and kill me or, or can, you know. I'm not afraid because my confidence is in the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. So your testimony, what is your testimony? What is your testimony? Amen. The problem is many people think they don't have a testimony. And I was one of those persons who I thought I didn't have a testimony because I was always a good girl. I didn't rob a bank. I wasn't part of, of a gang with tattoos everywhere and piercing. I wasn't in drugs. I didn't kill anybody. I wasn't a prostitute and then got saved. And now I have a testimony. No, I was a family girl. I never went to discos or parties. I never drank alcohol. I, I did drink for a little bit, but I'm not drinking anymore. <laughs> i tell you who did it. Pastor Steve did it. <laughs> In the honeymoon. Just a little glass, but because I never had it before, imagine. <laughs> One little sip and like, whoa. <laughs> 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 but 
don't need alcohol to have the joy of the Lord, which is pure and beautiful. I don't need alcohol. All I see today, everything you watch is advertising to alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. If you want to have a nice, relaxing if, uh, evening, alcohol. If you want to appear posh, alcohol. <laughs> if you want to forget things, alcohol. If you want to be cry, alcohol. Everything is alcohol. No, everything is no alcohol. Everything is Jesus for me. I don't need alcohol. And I have stood up against alcohol and say, no, alcohol. I don't need you. Not even one little tiny bit. Because the wine of the Holy Spirit. I prefer to be drunk in the Holy Spirit. If you say, well, one little bit. Am I preaching against alcohol? I'm preaching about this. Are all of us have clean conscience. Your life is going to influence people around you, either for good or for bad. And if you're posting on social media, I'm having a night in and a picture of uh, alcohol. What are you saying? Can't you post, I'm having a night, night in and you reading the word of God or pray? Why do you have to put a picture of alcohol? No one here has done it, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 3. I lost what I was going to, but if I need to come back to it, the Lord will remind me. Hallelujah. Your testimony is important. Why is our testimony important? Why some people think they don't have testimony? Because they think they are too good. But you got a wrong mirror. You got a faulty mirror. If you think you're good, you got a faulty mirror. You are looking at the wrong mirror. You need to look at God's word. That is your mirror. Let him tell you if you're good. Don't tell yourself and tell others you're good. Let him tell you if you're good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we look at the word of God, then we'll begin to discover who we really are. And you will be surprised. This lovely person you thought you were. It's actually a car broke, breaking. And it's very sad. And to realize when you get the conviction of the Holy Spirit that you are not as good as you think you are. But it is his goodness that shows you that so you can repent and get right with God. So when I said, God, I'm so good. I never slept with any boy. But when I look at his word, he says, when a man looks at a woman with lust in his eyes, he has committed adultery in the heart. Then I thought, oh, then I'm an adulterer of heart. <coughs> well, Lord, I'm so good. I never killed. I will never kill anybody. I mean, I will never even kill a chicken. Poor chicken. <laughs> Just give it to me when it's dead and cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if I had to go and kill and get them. Gonna, oh, no way. I'm so good, Lord. <laughs> but Jesus said, when you hate somebody, it's a murder of heart. hate. 
strong word, but you know, sometimes I want to don't hate them, but I'm offended. <laughs> Isn't it the same thing? <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, I'm a murderer. I'm a, an adulterer of heart. And by the way, I'm a, I was a blasphemer. I was a liar. I was a thief. I broke every single commandment. And that is why I needed Jesus. And that is why the Father loved me so much and sent Jesus to die on the cross. Because hell is real. And people without Jesus are going to hell. It's not about you going to church. It's not about you knowing about Jesus. But it's about you surrendering your life to him. Where he comes in, rips your old filthy, sinful nature, and gives you a new nature. Amen. Now you're fit for heaven. Amen. Why should I, why should the Father let us in into heaven when we still have a corrupted nature? We are going to ruin heaven, just like we ruin earth. So we need a change of nature that can only be done when I surrender my life to Jesus. Amen. And when his blood, his precious blood washes me clean, makes me a new person. <laughs> and I can come bo boldly into his presence. Now heaven is open for me. Nothing can stop me. Heaven is open. Amen. But not only you know you can change. People around you know you. Be. Don't fool yourself thinking you are a good Christian. When people around you, you're not stepping on people's toes. The greater in you. Is so great uh, that steps in people's toes, on people's toes. Correct in English, yeah? <sighs> Hello? Is anybody understanding me, what I'm saying? Yeah. The greater one is so greater in me that I cannot keep him quiet. No, 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 no. And I said, Lord, you can't say that. These are my friends, and I'm not on their lap. You can't, but you have to say it because the greater one says it. No, I don't do that anymore. That was my old life. Now I'm a new creature in Christ. You want to come and no, mm -mm -mm -mm. no. Oh, you always, you always talk about church. You always talk about. They don't like you anymore. According to them, you're no fun anymore. Yet you are having the greatest time in God's presence. And your conscience is clean. And you have no fear of death. And you're afraid of no one. Ah, oh, yesterday in the outreach on the streets, we just love to stop strangers, don't we, guys? Say, yeah. so Danny, Conrad. Gabriela, Anna. And I saw this, this black, tall, muscly guy with a mean face. <laughs> walking like that in a hurry. Yeah, and I said, there's a nice little lady there. And there's this mean person here. Who shall I talk to them? The mean one. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, Lord. I'm not going to be afraid. I got a great message to tell them. <laughs> Hi. And so on. <laughs> yeah. Because they're always listening. They're always busy. Do you go to church? Do you know? No, no, I didn't say that this time because I normally say, do you go to church? This time I said, do you know that I, God has such an amazing love for us that he sent Jesus to die for us? 
No. <laughs> Wait, let me tell you about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who did that? Who did that? Who changed me in such a way? Who gave me such boldness? Who changed me? Who gives me the words as I speak to them? So fast. When English is not my first language. Was the greater one. The greater one in me that I said, Lord, use me. Lord, here I am. And I stood with shaking knees and trembling. And so I just go to the old ladies. Oh, just, well, Lord, I'm just here by faith. Even if I just give leaflets and smile. <laughs> I've been there. But I cannot stay there. Amen. Because uh, the, uh, what is that sound? That's the rising of the sun. The going down. No, that's a different sun. <laughs> the, the light of, this, of the righteous get brighter. I'm brighter, I'm brighter. He takes us from glory to glory to glory. He takes us from faith to faith to faith. Hallelujah. 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 Did I tell you about the time when I was, this is not boasting in me. This is boasting in what the greater than that because I cannot ever do that. Did I tell you about the time we watched the movie in the cinema of the uh, machine gun preacher? Controversial a little bit. But there we were watching the movie, my husband and I. And so the screen is at the, there, at the front, of course. And, and the people are looking there to the screen. E exit doors are not at the back. The exit doors are at the front where the screen is. All the way to the front, you have to go to get out. So as soon as the movie is finished, <laughs> I said to my husband, let's go. He likes to see. Everybody was emotional, touched, shocked. Just like, Ugh. And I said to my husband, quick, 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 let's go, let's go. And he says, Okay, you know, he, he, he likes to watch the credits and all of the things. No, 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 let's go. <laughs> okay, this woman, you know. So we walked down and we stood at the front and about to get out. I stood and looked at all the people. <laughs> They're still in shock like that. What did you just, just watch? <laughs> and I said, all you people. <laughs> You just watch this movie. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to carry on with your lives? The same? Or are you going to do something? Are you going to get to church and try to find about Jesus? Amen. Let's go with that limit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I should have stayed. I shouldn't have stayed at the door with the leaflets and say, if you want a church, here's a church, come to find out. <laughs> but I didn't. But I had it go. Because the greater in one cannot keep me quiet. When I'm sharing my faith in the Holy Ghost, he wants to be loud. He wants to do something. He wants to go and touch people. But if I'm not stirring my faith and I'm thinking about me, then I want to stay home. I want to have my relaxed time. Nobody bother me, please. This is my time. But when I stir up the spirit of God, the faith, he cannot keep still. Thank you, Jesus. What is your testimony? If you don't have a testimony, it's because you're not looking at the mirror of God's word. You're not finding out who you are. You think too much of yourself. And I agree, you're a nice person. But God looks deeper. 
He look at the intentions of our hearts. And not only the intentions, the motives, the, 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 how, the attitudes. Right? Because we think, this is our lesson for Sunday school that I prepare. We think I have to cho choose between good or bad. Is this good to do or this is bad? Okay, I choose the good. Okay, God, I chose the good. Are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> it's not about that. What's your attitude? Okay, God, I chose the good, and I'm being happy. Can you see? <laughs> and he says, what's your motive? Why did you choose the good, and why are you happy? Because you know that with that are the requirements for me to bless you, right? You want something, don't you? You see what I'm talking about? He looks so much deeper than what we do. And we can be busy all day doing things for God. But he looks at into our hearts, for our attitude, and our intentions. It's so difficult to please God. So difficult. Because it's never meant to be in a natural efforts. It's meant to be done by faith and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I cannot do it in my natural means. Or I will neglect something. I did the good, but my attitude wasn't great. But I did have a good intention, but it's never perfect. But when I do it by faith and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God's word. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is alive. Alive. For the word of God is alive. Alive and powerful. This is an easy version. It is sharper than the sharpest two edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. He exposes our inner. Mode. Always think why did the joint and marrow have to be in there? Just confuses everything. What it has to do with joint and marrow here with the spirit and the soul? Have you tried to cut between the joint and the marrow? It's an impossible task. You always are going to cut a little bit of marrow with a bit of a You can't get vitally perfectly. By the word of God can. He can divide perfectly what is the spirit and what is soulish. What is you, your intentions, your effort, and what is the spirit. I can't do it, but I did in faith. And then the Holy Spirit empowered me. Only the word of God can do that. Hallelujah. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. I'm so glad he does expose them. So I can be blameless in the day of judgment. And I'm so glad he exposes it to me personally. And not to the whole world. Unless I neglect to repent from my conviction privately. And I continue in my sin. 
even though I know Christ, then he will expose it private, publicly. But it's up to you. How do you want to be exposed? Because you will be exposed. Sooner or later, you will be exposed. How? Privately and repentance right now in my secret place with the Lord? Or later on in public? Or worse of all, at the judgment seat of Christ? When all of humanity are going to come and all the things they have done and thought will be exposed for everyone to see. And at the end, to say, depart from me, workers of iniquity. But for those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, there is not going to be a judgment at the white throne of God. That's for sinners. For us, we will be judged and our works will pass through fires. Everything that is gold and silver will remain. Everything that can survive the fire will remain. But everything that we have done in this life that has been straw and waste of time, things that we haven't heard God, we just wait and do things in our own strength so that we'll, you know. Because, 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 for those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, when we come the day, I mean, it's, we are not going to go there because it will be a waste of time. Because when God says, okay, so-and-so, you, that is so-and-so. <laughs> That's <in> Spanish. <laughs> so-and-so means stupid. Um, you, stand up here. No, he will say, my beloved child, to the ones redeemed by the blood. Here, let us see what you've done in your life. Emptiness, emptiness, white. Nothing there. Nothing there. Because it's been washed by the blood of Jesus. We've been forgiven by the blood of Jesus. We don't have to go to the judgment seat of Christ. It's only for sinners who still got all that baggage, which ends this destruction, torment, everything that God is not. There is everything that is good in this life is because of God. Amen. Laughter, friendship, goodness, everything. You say, people mock and say, oh, I'll be with my friends in hell. There's no friends in hell. Friends are in heaven because friendship is good. All in hell is enemies. I have a party. There's no party in hell. The party is in heaven. Amen. It's only grieving and torment in hell. Because party is good. God made party. And the party is there. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is going to the party? <laughs> Second Timothy 3, 16, 17. All scripture. Say with me, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is prof profitable, profitable, <laughs> profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that a man of God may be complete and the woman of God to truly equip for every good work. Am I adding here? Woman of God is heresy. She's adding to God's word. No. That's a plural. Includes men and women. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Easy version. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us. 
what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Danny, come, come here, Danny. If you want a testimony, then get into God's word. Because God's word will show you what's wrong with you. You will overcome it by the blood of the lamb. No, Danny, I don't want you to play. <coughs> it's okay, he can't read my mind. You will overcome by the blood of the lamb. And then you will have a testimony. Because because of the blood, you overcame that sin in your life. Amen. Because of the blood, you overcame that stronghold in your life. Because of the blood, you got healing in your body. Because of the blood and whatever is the thing that is stopping you. You will overcome it because of that blood that I was shed in Calvary for us. His blood is different to any blood. Our blood is an Adamic blood corrupted with nature. The nature is corrupted. When sin came into Adam, every man after Adam has blood that is corrupted with sin. That's why Jesus was sent to be, it was a supernatural miracle that the Holy Spirit came upon Mary. She conceived Jesus supernaturally and her blood was not mixed with the blood of Jesus. In any other birth, the man and the, the father and the mother create that new blood for this baby. But in Jesus' case, no. Because his blood needed to be perfect. And he needed to be 100% human. And he was. And with that blood, then he could do something that nobody else could which is forever shed that blood for the forgiveness of sin. There's no forgiveness of sin until there is shedding of blood. But his perfect blood may that his the sins were not only forgiven, they were wiped away forever, never to be remembered and create a new blood lineage. So now when I put my hope and my faith in Jesus, his blood comes into me, spiritually speaking, comes into me, washes me, and a new blood line flows through me. So if you're afraid that in your bloodline you, there is cancer, there is heart problems, there are uh, headaches, there are whatever genes, bad genes, guess what? You have a new bloodline in Jesus. If you still want to believe that, you will be subject to that. But if you activate the blood of Jesus... Nothing, nothing of that can take us. Amen. Celeste, can you play the keyboard? Come, Danny. I want you to help me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray for Danny. She kata ramama yasoko rototo. Yebreketata ya soko roto popo boyo sukaya teke yanda 
I thank you, Lord, for this young man's life. It's yours. I thank you for young people beginning to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, for the new time, new times, new times. Shiakiata kata ya baraba. New line in the blood of Jesus. Siaka raba baba ya soko rodo yo shiaka. Yende kieta sobre da kierida tiki ye so koto bamba ya shika. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shele de de shara bokori anana shele. Sora baba shele de de de. Kola da da ba sheli de de sheli ana boshori ya sheli de de shi ana bosholo ro shi ababa sembre sheli de ya ba boshori ya sheli de de shi ana. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. God would, I think God would just tell us, guys, it's simple. You know, it's it's not hard. It's simple. Just believe. You know, and you'll see the goodness of God. Believe. It's simple. Sometimes we make it so complicated. We make it about this and that, and it's just simple. And and like Mum said, at the end of the day, we all are going to stand before God. And and it's not to to cause. We all are going to stand before Jesus Christ. And, and, and when I used to think about it, it used to scare the pants out off of me. And I used to think, man, because I just saw in my life there was no fruit at all. You know, but it was a good fear because it drew me to God. So if you, if when you hear about that and it brings fear, it don't see it as a bad thing. It, sometimes that's a good thing because it, it's drawing you to, to get to a deeper place where the motive of your heart, like mum said, can be pure. So it can only be about God's glory and about giving him glory and about your whole life, everything you do in your life, representing Jesus. Like every single person that you meet, they need to see Jesus through your life because we're going to be accountable for that. And then this is what God's been showing me just this week. You know, we have to focus on the good. We have to focus on what God is doing. And don't, don't complain like the Israelites did, you know. They all saw the cloud of glory. They all saw the fire, you know. They all were delivered from Egypt, all of them. But some didn't have faith. Some just didn't have that. They didn't believe, and they only saw the bad. And I'm preaching to myself, and God has been working on me to just focus on the good. Because for me, my own testimony, I was, I was probably... Whew, Thank God. Yeah, so I, I got saved and, and the Lord touched me. And um, I was so weak in my faith. And one, ta- one day I was reading the word and, 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 and I see about this unforgivable sin. And um, I just, you know, I started getting attacked in my mind and I thought that I'd committed this sin and I was cut off from God. And um, I was so... In my head, I just had so much depression, hopelessness, like so lost. And it was all lies of the enemy. And it's just because I wasn't believing the word. And um, for about two years, uh, just went through complete hell, torment. Because the thing was, I believed with all my heart the gospel. And I knew it was true. I knew heaven was real. I knew hell was real. I was like, God, I'm lost. I'm going there. And all the time, the whole time, God, he hadn't left me, man. He never forsook me. He was always there. And he was just wanting me to repent and believe the gospel. And I made it so complicated. So if you feel like you're hopeless, like you've got no hope, like you're just lost, like you've blown it, God is here, man. You can repent. And heaven and hell are real. And we do need to fear God. But we need to repent, you know. I feel that's what God's saying to us all. We need to repent and and come to what it's really about. You know, Jesus gave everything for us and he loves us so much and, and it's all about him. So I'd encourage you today, guys, don't don't look at yourself, just come to God, come with an honest heart and a pure heart and say, God, change me, I need you, fill me with your spirit, change me, show me the way and just be in that place of 
dependency upon him. Seek God and pray to God because your life means so much and it counts so much because every person that you see, every person that you meet, they need to see Jesus in you because at the end of the day, it's going to be heaven and hell. And those who don't know Christ are going to be separated forever, man. So I encourage you guys, just shine. Let Jesus shine through your lives. Just seek the Lord. And if you're going through trials, tribulations, praise God. Don't be like the Israelites. Don't complain. Don't murmur. Don't see the bad. See the good. Because through that fiery trial, the precious gold faith will come. Through that fiery trial, God will work in your life so deep that you'll have a, such a solid faith, such a solid assurance. You can overcome and it's because of God. And it's only for Him and it's only His glory. And, and that's my testimony. I thought that, that I was finished forever. But God brought me through and, and now I have such a so, solid faith because the devil lied to me for two years telling me I was finished that, that, that I'd commit the unpardonable sin and that I'd never be forgiven but God had a greater plan and he forgave me and he changed my mind he changed my heart I used, I used to be insane I used to hear voices in my head and he set me free and it's all glory to him and, and the word is true, no flesh will glory in his presence. As mum said, no flesh will glory in his presence. So it's all about his spirit. And, and the grace of God, man, can transform you. But it need, you need to come to that place where you say, God, I need your grace. I need you. I, I need you to, to help me in my life because I want to serve you. I want to live for you. And to get in that place where it's like what is right what, in the motive of your heart. And it's like, Lord, we want to do your will. We want to honor you. And so because I don't know your heart, man. Only God knows your heart. I don't know what your intent is. I don't know what the motive of your heart is, but God does. And I'm here to tell you that God is willing that none should perish, but that all would come to repentance. But that's your choice. You know, it's your choice whether you're going to believe God and really serve him with all your heart or you're, you're not going to listen. But if you do come to God, if you do believe, and if you do repent, he'll make you a new creature. He'll make you brand new and he'll wash away your sins and he'll fill you with his spirit and he'll change your whole life and people will see the difference in you and they will see the change in you. And you, you can know God personally as your Lord and Savior. You can know him, you know. So I, I just, that's all I just felt to share there in my heart. And, and I'm trembling right now. I can, but it's, it's God's goodness, man. You know? Because, wow, thank you, Lord. I am what I am by the grace of God, man. And God had so much mercy on me. And he can have mercy on you. His mercy is everlasting. So don't lose hope. Just remember the, what the good the Lord has done. Always remember the good the Lord has done. And don't complain, don't murmur, because you're going you're gonna to be cut off. Just focus on God, focus on His goodness, and love God. You know, don't focus on the problem because you make it bigger. Just focus on God and, and loving Him, and everything else will, will be sorted out. If you seek first the kingdom and His righteousness, every other thing will be added unto you. You see, that's the lie of the enemy. Everything in this life is telling you to focus on your job, to focus on your career, to focus on your family, and it's just a complete lie of the enemy. It distracts you. But the main thing is his kingdom, his righteousness, because then everything else is sorted out and everything else is added. Because in that place, God is first, and he needs to be first. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of life, of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, 
that he may be glorified. Thank you, Danny, for the testimony. But that's how amazing is our God. And as I was in the streets yesterday, I suddenly felt a surge of the Holy Spirit. Tell them how amazing is God's love that he has sent Jesus to die for them. See, Jesus loves you. It's not biblical. But God loves you. It is. For God loves the world. For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. Look at this. To give them beautiful ashes. Tell me, what can you do? Tell me if you can do anything beautiful with ashes. It's impossible. You can never do anything with ashes except God. If you think that your life is like ashes, wants to make you beautiful because that's what Danny thought he thought his life was ashes he was finished but he wasn't he hasn't even begun what God has in store for him he is in the Holy Ghost 24-7 Preaching to anything that moves. Seeing miracles. But that's nothing. For what God has ahead for him. And for you. If you just surrender to him. We'll just stand up this morning. And we are in the presence of the Lord. And as you stand up in reverence, close your eyes so you don't get distracted. Thank you, Father. The Lord is calling today those who are hungry and thirsty for his righteousness. To stop compromising the truth. Because he doesn't want you almost there. He wants you completely there. He doesn't want you almost clean. He wants you completely clean. He doesn't want you to have almost the truth, but to be in the whole truth. This is a call to salvation for those who have never heard the gospel or you have but you haven't made the decision to come to Christ and surrender your life. But it's also a call to Christians who are living their lives compromising with sin and think that it's okay that it's not a big deal today the Lord is saying to you don't bring disgrace to my name 
if you are in, then be in. I said, if you are in, then be in. Tiobo, you think yes, in Dakia, Terere, Maki, Roto, Bokio, Toroto, Sumbra, Gata. Tieto, Sipe, Kia, Dakia, Taba, Joso. You may be saying, I have tried it. But it didn't work. The Lord says to you, you have tried it in your own strength. And not in the power of the Holy Spirit. Stay in the way you are and wishing that all the bad will go away will not do. You have to do something. You have to do something. You have to stand up, make the steps, get out of that boat, and come to me. And the altar here is open right now. Right now, the altar is open for you to come publicly and surrender your life to Jesus. When he died on that cross, he was naked. And he died publicly in front of all for our sin to take our shame if you are surrendering your life to Jesus you cannot do it privately in secret you have to do it publicly you have to do it publicly Shekiato Baba Yeto So Kirima Kikai Shoko. Can you hear the voice?